So, you want to do an LS swap? Where do you start? Research. 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 I'd spent a bunch of hours on the internet researching things, YouTube, and some performance magazine articles. I have to say that one of the biggest influences of doing it was Roadkill, Faster Proms, Cletus McFarlane, and a couple of the other popular YouTube channels really convinced me that this was something that I wanted to do, especially coming to the realization of the potential of the LS engine. So obviously you need a vehicle that the LS is going to end up in. As I mentioned, if you watch some of my intro videos, mine is a Mazda B2200, it's a 1992 that I bought from a junkyard to keep one of my already on-the-road Mazdas going. As I mentioned before, the Mazda's just come in so handy, it's been a great truck, and I've used it to haul lumber, and uh, the truck is set up for all the uses that I intend to use it for, so it just made sense to have some fun with this project as well. It's been in the plan for a couple of years to do a V8 conversion on this. I had a 1996 Vortec engine that I was going to put in, but I was really leery because the distributor was still in the back of that particular engine, and I know the firewall clearance was really close. And my research was is that the V8s fit in these trucks no problem, but most of the conversions were done with the Ford V8 mostly the 5 liter with the distributor in the front. So after hours and hours of research, it pretty much came abundantly clear that this engine is just lends itself so well to swaps. Everything from Ford Fairmonts to Mazda Miatas to the 240SX Nissans and anything in between. So the Mazda wasn't a stretch. So with a lot of the research complete, the next step is go find an engine. I happened across my donor engine in the junkyard. I was dropping off a load of scrap and I noticed this truck sitting in the junkyard. I did a thorough walk around, looked underneath, and I realized that the reason why it might be there is because the frame had some substantial rot. So I asked to borrow a jump box from the salvage yard and they found the key for me and I hit the thing with the jump start and it fired right off tested the transmission it moved back and forth so I ran right home and grabbed my trailer and loaded the thing up so I have the vehicle I have the donor vehicle for the engine now what do I do so I started stripping the truck down I pulled the motor while it was still attached to the transmission I took all of the coolant system I took all of the wiring the factory computer knowing full well that I had to create a harness a standalone harness to make the engine run. Through my research, I realized that I really need to get this engine running on its own with a standalone harness. And how I went about doing that was the number one most helpful site was lt1swap.com. Brendan put together a wonderful website with every piece of information you need to know to create a standalone harness from a factory harness. Brendan at LT1Swap.com provides all the information to take the harness apart, get rid of the things you don't need, maintain the things you need, all the pinouts on the computer terminals, what all the sensors do and how they work. Some of the fantastic things that Brendan supplies on his LT1Swap website and web pages is the photos of actual wiring and the schematic diagrams to get all of the things done necessary. I ran an automatic, he was very descriptive in how to wire up the torque converter clutch, the fuel pump relays, the cooling fans, you name it. It was just um, a real simple diagram to follow. I can't thank him enough. One of the services Brendan at LT1Swap.com provides is actually flashing the computer to eliminate the vehicle anti-theft program and also some other parameters so your engine will run on a standalone harness. His came back, it worked perfectly, and it fired up on the very first time, and I was super pleased with it. Brandon will reflash the computer for you at lt1swap.com. He's the most reasonable person I've found. The shipment 
out includes the shipment in return and you send him all the parameters from fuel injector size to the type of transmission you're running and in a matter of a couple of days you get it back. I'll put the link in the description below to his webpage. You won't regret going from there and learning all that you can. One of the more time consuming things associated with the wiring was to eliminate the unnecessary things from the factory vehicle harness and then tying it all into the new LS harness. I chose to use the factory Silverado dash and install it in the Mazda pickup truck which was kind of a chore but well worth it because I was able to take advantage of all of the data that was coming out of the computer and taking the analog dash out of the Mazda and putting the computerized dash in gave me all of my gauges, tachometer and speedometer. The other benefit of putting the Silverado dash in the Mazda is I was able to get my range selector for my shifter. And you can see on the picture on the right, all of the factory computer is hidden behind the glove box. The OBD2 port is on the bottom of the dash and all of the solenoids and fuses are behind the kick panel where the factory computer was. This is the end of phase one, part one. I wanted to cover the wiring aspects and the acquisition of the motor in this particular part and next we'll be talking about the actual fabrication that took place to install the motor and transmission. So go find your vehicle, get yourself a junkyard engine, do your research and you can make this happen. Don't be afraid of the junkyard engines. If you watch the latest videos from Cletus McFarland they're making almost 800 horsepower on a stock bottom end Sloppy Mechanics is doing this all the time. They've made over a thousand horsepower. You can do this. It's reliable. I've got 7,000 miles on this build and my wiring hasn't let me down and the motor and transmission is just performing great.